What's up guys, back with another Fallout 4 video, and today I figured we could go ahead and talk about the aliens in the Fallout universe, and whether it was them that managed to start the Great War or not. Now, before we get into this video, this video will mostly be based around an audio log that the player can find during Fallout 3's Mothership Zeta DLC. This audio log is both bizarre and controversial among the community, which is what makes it so interesting to talk about. However, before we talk about that specific audio log, let's go ahead and discuss what we know about the aliens that appear in both Fallout 3 and Fallout 4. According to the official guide for the Game of the Year edition of Fallout 3, aliens were, quote, once thought to be covered up by a government conspiracy and believed only by crackpot groups such as the Quarry Verum. Evidence of extraterrestrial life can be traced back throughout human history, but became nationally recognized after the mysterious disappearance of the Clarabella 7 space pod during the 1960s space race. It is said that alien technology was the basis of many of the Enclave's more exotic and impressive weaponry and robotics, and even toy manufacturers such as Wilson Automatoys weren't immune to these accusations. Recently, after the discovery of an alien body in Fort Bannister, the shocking truth was revealed. The aliens are not only real and alive, but they're back. And they're pissed. It's worth mentioning, while UFOs and saucers have existed since the very first Fallout game, aliens as we know them in Fallout 4 first appeared in Fallout 3, and are referred to as Zayton aliens. Typically, the Zayton aliens are these green, 1950s looking aliens with enlarged hands and heads compared to the rest of their bodies. And it's also worth mentioning that in both Fallout 3 and 4, the Zaytans are typically portrayed as hostile. During Fallout 3's Mothership Zeta, the Lone Wanderer is forced to kill most of the aliens on the Mothership, and in Fallout 4, the sole survivor will end up killing the Zayton alien that crashes just outside of downtown Boston. We don't really know where the Zaytans come from, but we do know of at least two Motherships that appear to have visited the Earth since the early 1600s. Obviously, one of these Motherships is Mothership Zeta, which is boarded by the Lone Wanderer during the Mothership Zeta DLC for Fallout 3, and the other Mothership is unnamed, but destroyed by the player during the events of the Mothership Zeta DLC. And the reason we know that the Zaytans have visited the Earth since the 1600s is because one of their captives, Toshiro Kago, is a Japanese samurai that is from feudal Japan, and according to the Fallout 3 official guide, it's mentioned that Toshiro's armor, quote, appears to date from around the Azuchi Momoyama period, which would have occurred from 1568 to 1603. We also know of a few other captives, like Paulson, who is a cowboy that dates from between the mid to late 1800s, an astronaut named Colonel Hardigan, who was the pilot for Clarabella 7 and is confirmed to be from the 1960s space race, a little girl named Sally, who dates to the year 2077, a United States soldier named Elliot Tekorian, who is also dated from 2077, and a slaver named Soma, who is dated to the 2270s and appears to have discovered the alien's radio signal sometime before the Lone Wanderer does. There are also several recorded audio logs of the various prisoners that Zaytans have abducted in Fallout 3's Mothership Zeta. In fact, the subject of this video is based on one of these captives' audio logs. This audio log is really interesting since the human voice is totally silent, so if you listen to it without viewing the subtitles, you would think that this was some randomly recorded alien speech. However, upon turning on the subtitles and quickly exiting your Pip-Boy menu, the dialogue is revealed. So, we'll go ahead and we'll show you that right now. This bit of dialogue would suggest that the Zaytans were trying to retrieve nuclear launch codes from some U.S. military personnel in the Fallout universe. However, it seems like just before the person gives the codes to activate the launch sequences, 
they resist. And this particular line of dialogue between the Silent Voice and the Zetans is why quite a few Fallout fans have theorized the possibility of aliens starting or causing the Great War to happen. After all, the Zetans do appear to have some hatred of humans, and if they manage to get the codes to activate the launch sequences, perhaps they could kill all humans. So I suppose we should answer the question. Did the Zetan aliens cause the Great War? Now, in my opinion, no, and here's why. While an argument could be made that intent may or may not factor into it, especially since the Zetans may have inadvertently or unintentionally caused the Great War, I don't think the Zetans ultimately desired to wipe out all humans. Or perhaps at the very least, both Mothership Zeta and the unnamed Mothership didn't seek to kill all humans. We know that both motherships have visited the Earth since the 1600s, and it seems like if the Zetans wanted to wipe out all humans, it would have made the most sense to do so then, rather than wait until the 2070s in order to do so. After all, can an army of samurai defeat a Zetan mothership in space? A society like the pre-war United States, or even pre-war China, that is capable of what the Zetans would probably refer to as primitive space travel, would be more of a threat. But ultimately, it would make the most sense for the Zetans to attack humanity when it's incapable of defending itself, rather than when it is more capable of defending itself from the Zetans. Furthermore, if the Zetans wanted to wipe out humans, it would probably make the most sense to engineer some kind of pathogen or disease to kill all humans, especially if the Zetans intended on preserving the planet as it was before the war. Allowing humanity to nuke itself would have had dire consequences for not just the Earth, but also the rest of the other organisms that live on Earth as well. I think another important question to ask is, what do the Zetans gain from intentionally nuking the planet? Their previous behavior seems to indicate that they would rather observe and experiment on human specimens over time. Nuking the planet would greatly affect human DNA, possibly making it less fit for study. After all, one of the reasons the Institute in Fallout 4 abducted Sean was because he had uncorrupted human DNA from before the war, and it's likely the Zetans would find uncorrupted DNA more valuable as well. I think it's also worth discussing that the Great War itself was largely the product of the United States War with China, which was ongoing even after the events of the Anchorage Reclamation. What initially started the conflict between China and the United States was the fact that the Chinese government was on the verge of collapse due to their dependence on fossil fuels. When the Chinese attempted to negotiate and trade with the United States, the United States refused, and in an act of desperation, the Chinese invaded Alaska and captured Anchorage. By the mid-2070s, the United States ultimately gained an advantage thanks to the development of technologies like power armor, and by 2077, the Chinese had lost Alaska, they had crippled supply lines at home, and the U.S. was quickly taking over more of their key cities. As you can imagine, China was in a very desperate position. It would make the most sense for China to launch nukes rather than the U.S. because the Chinese government was on the verge of collapse. While the United States could attempt to nuke China, it wouldn't make much sense for them to do so as they were winning the war. I also think that on some level, one could argue that the Great War was inevitable given the fact that both the United States and the People's Republic of China were superpowers and both were at war with one another. I think a question that's worth asking is, what stake do the Zetans have in the conflict between China and the United States? The Zetans have flying saucers and are presumably capable of interstellar travel, so I highly doubt that they would have much use for fossil fuels. On some level, it's possible that the Zetans view us much like humans would view an ant farm. Sure, humans have developed civil societies and harnessed nuclear power, however the pre-war societies in the Fallout universe aren't capable of interstellar travel and haven't evolved culturally since the 1950s. On some level, the idea that the Zetans triggered the Great War implies that Earth and humanity are more important in the universe than we may really be. Perhaps if the only intelligent species in the entire universe are Zetans and humans, then we might be onto something. However, in the greater scheme of things, I don't think humanity is that important. Perhaps we could be at some point, but ultimately, I just highly doubt that the Zetans really care about our fossil fuels. Another question that's worth asking is if the Zetans managed to get the codes to activate the launch sequences, could they have successfully launched a nuke? I would say no. 
Granted, things may be different in the Fallout universe, but in the real world, only the President of the United States can direct the use of nuclear weapons by U.S. armed forces. According to Wikipedia, there are specific systems in place which verify that these orders specifically came from the president themselves. While it's true that the president needs confirmation from the Secretary of Defense to have the order authorized, the president can fire the Secretary of Defense and the Secretary's second-in-command would step up and provide their authorization. From there, a launch crew of two operators must verify the president's authorization code against a sealed copy located in a safe that requires both operators to open the lock. Once the order is verified, they must insert their launch keys and turn them at the same time in order to launch. The consistent theme that you will always see is that it usually takes more than one person to launch. The identities of the commanding officers issuing the orders must be verified, and from there, two or more people are usually required in order to actually launch the missile. The reason it's done this way is to verify that the missiles are going to be deployed to the proper places, and to also make sure that there is no single person that has the ability to launch a missile. And the reason for that is this prevents a rogue agent from trying to circumvent authority and launch a nuclear missile by themselves. Based on the silent dialogue of the Zayton captive, it would appear that they aren't the president, who would have had the authority to launch. Most likely, the Zayton captive is a part of the launch crew, and due to the nature of how the launch protocol is designed, even if he or she went rogue, they wouldn't possess the ability to launch by themselves. This is the case provided that the United States military are using the two-man rule in the Fallout universe, which it seems like they would. Something that is definitely weird and worth asking is, why is the human voice silent in the audio log? All of the other alien captive logs from Mothership Zeta are completely voiced, yet this one doesn't appear to be. It's also weird that Bethesda would take the time to work out the subtitles, yet not add the voice. It's likely what happened here is that Bethesda ultimately cut this bit of voice dialogue from the final product. However, they forgot to remove the subtitles and haven't gone back to change them ever since. Perhaps Bethesda figured that most people would play with the subtitles off, given that the conversations that you have with NPCs usually always display the spoken dialogue. After all, if generic subtitles are off and you're looking at your Pip-Boy while you're listening to this message, you would never realize that the subtitles containing the silent human voice are there. At the end of the day, I'm going to have to say that the Zayton aliens most likely didn't start or cause the Great War, simply because they don't have a dog in the fight and because they don't really have much to gain from the entire scenario. It would also seem that from a logistical perspective, that would be impossible for just one guy to know and then be able to initiate a launch. So, if you ask me, the Zaytans being solely responsible for the nuclear war, or the Great War, doesn't really seem possible in the Fallout universe. But alright guys, I think that's going to wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like, click the bell to join the notification squad, and as always, take care, and I'll see you all next time.